Got a pretty rainbow here over the boat landing. It did stretch all the way across, but that cloud has got it on that side now. It actually was a double rainbow that went all the way over there. Still beautiful. Hey guys, we about to take you guys out shrimp trawling right here off the coast of South Carolina. Right out in front of the beautiful houses on Harbor Island. I got my good, good friend, Philip McFerrin, that's going to take Steph and I out with his wife, Shelly. We're on a 25 foot Lafayette skiff. What's this skiff powered by? Four-cylinder little diesel Cummins engine. We got the big trawl winch in the back. We're gonna be pulling a 35 foot trawl net. With what size boat are we using here? Come on. Three by four foot doors. Four foot doors, and we're basically gonna be pulling about. Oh, 
another one over this way. And right over that way, guys, off in the distance, Edisto Beach. And we got another one off this way. So we surrounded by this little storm. bag right here that we're gonna be just throwing out letting it drift out behind the boat start pulling the net and putting tension on everything we are running a turtle excluder right here and the fish eye we don't want to get tangled up in this thing Philip It's going to start pulling everything out. And what we're looking for is it to build up tension and jerk all this net off the back of the boat and start pulling on the doors. Everything's pretty clear off the back now. Looks good. We're a little twisted up back here. the back back there Philip <laughs> looks like our net has spun around there yeah, I see. So we're trying to get that twist out guys We need to grab that rope down there, pull it. Speed up just a little bit. We're speeding up a little bit to put a little tension on it. Everything looks a little bit better back here, guys. We got our center line hooked to those buoys top of our net is hooked to the top of the doors on each side and the tickle chain is hooked to the bottom of these trawl doors with these sleds they need to be dragging on the bottom and they'll start to plane out as they hit the water so we want to start letting it out guys and watch and see if those doors start planing left to right slowly you can see that from start to move out 
There goes the other one. It's looking good. And I'm just slowly easing it back, guys. Looking good, fella. I think we got it, buddy. We're gonna let off of it a little bit here, guys. Slowly. You can see it being out. And we need to start co coming down with that right there, our pull block. So we're pulling straight off the back. Uh, pulling up high like that right there, the position we had it, it'll make it real top heavy on the boat. Can turn the boat over. Go left of the red boy. Oh, 
time they uh
sort of starting to come out of the water.
that means Oliver has slowed us down and putting us in this turn that I was talking about. So as you can see, we're starting to kind of curve around. And Philip is muscling in this tail bag. How's it feel, Philip? <laughs> I don't know because everything we do seems to take a lot of effort. the international I mean the intercoastal harvester which is a play on the international harvester tractors so I was wondering if this some um, fella right here has got the international harvester engine in the back of this some um, or in this little shrimp boat that he's crawling around with I love the name the intercoastal harvester that's pretty cool some stuff all caught up in the net right there right before the net gets to this turtle excluder 
So I think that's why they were thinking maybe it was twisted because we could see all that little stuff there. But I think that's just the little small jelly balls that are just kind of all caught up in that little section of the net. Don't know if you can really see that, the little whitish brown in that net, but that's what it is right here. All these little jelly balls, but little smaller ones. And these little um, cannonball jellyfish, they don't sting. As you can see, I'm picking it up barehanded. I'm not really worried about it stinging. They don't, if they sting, they don't have um, stingers that affect humans, I guess. A lot of times if you do see these like on the beach or out in the water there'll be a little spider crab that likes to ride along with those fellas just catch a ride as they're floating around in the um tide in the surf of course one thing i didn't show you that i see a lot of here too that we'll be throwing back because they are still alive are the sand dollars and check this one out it's broken on this edge right here but it is still just living right on its sand dollar life. So we're gonna throw it right back on out there too. Woohoo! Got him, girl. Got him. Yeah. We love big shrimp and we cannot lie. That's right. little hog chokers here and these are some of the most uh, resilient fish that I have ever seen guys these are some of the fish they can get tangled up in the net stuck to the side of the boat or whatever and for hours live out of the water of course we want to try to get them back into the water as quickly as possible as we sort through all this but it's pretty interesting that those guys can live out of the water so long Whereas other species, once they're out of the water, even for a very short amount of time, they are deceased, like this little trout here. So there's your spider crab Shelly's found. And these are what I was saying, actually ride along in those cannonball jellyfish a lot. The, big, the little spider crabs here in our area. In other areas, those crabs get pretty big, but here, they stay pretty small. The biggest one I've ever seen has only been about that big around as far as the actual carapace. So, all right, let me get down and get some gloves on so I can help get some of these shrimp sorted so we can keep on doing it again. All right, Captain Phillip, Shelly, Shelly, myself, and Oliver, we have gotten them all cleaned up and sorted and deheaded for you. So, I hope so. I hope it's full back there in that tail bag. So let's take a look and see what our bouncy was of tails. So of course it's mixed in with some ice. And this is a 154 cooler, is that right? That's right. So y'all see how beautiful these turned out. Gorgeous.
compared to what is on some of these big commercial boats. Keep going in a circle. You keep going in a circle? 
So which way does she need to go? In a circle or toward the beach? Y'all want her to speed up some or keep going this speed? Alright. Struggle is real guys. Y'all like to come along on our adventures. Y'all are on us for a real adventure right this moment. What you need, I can help you with. attention to me now that I did throw that one head got about 40 seagulls that have lifted off the ocean back there trying to come and see if we throw anything out yet this dolphin swimming around trying to see if we can give him anything other than um, these jelly balls that are falling out of this net he's hoping to catch anything that's being thrown back or falling out of this net Oh, 
Are bringing it around that pole or through the middle? trying to come up with a solution to this gel of a problem. Hey, come back over here, stop. bunch of different shorebirds out here today. That might be why 
Um, we see the commercial boats or the guys that do it a lot go in early, right? Yeah. <laughs> they know these jelly balls are coming. Jelly balls, jelly balls. Yeah. solvers. You want me to pull it this way some? I don't think you're going to be able to pull that. Well, I mean, I meant with y'all's help. Yeah. Nope. That's Not even a little bit. What you want, Bob? Yep. Take this job and Where's my grand <laughs> All right, Philip, you don't fall yourself off of here now. Wow. Although it's only six foot, you'll be able you know you can't swim. But it's you only six foot, you will be able to stand up out here. No, I can't help you. What? All I can do is pray for you at that point. Maybe try to throw you something. If you can't swim, like Oliver says, you're not going to stand on top of my head to take your last breath. You better stay in this boat or get you a life jacket on. Well, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. That's why I said I would throw you something. I'm glad you got it hooked there. We would try to throw it to you as best you can. Like I said, we're only in six foot of water. You told me that you would pay me top dollar to see this table full today, right? You did, I didn't say a fortune. <laughs> That's you right. You should have been more specific. He's going to pay you top dollar of no attention. we're checking on guys because even though you see we are surrounded by water those of you who are familiar with this area this area inside these red cans i know you can't see it but in some of our videos you see us go by these red cans a lot right out here in front of coffin point and harbor island so this is harbor island well you're stuck on this don't rip it So 
as I was saying, this is Harbor Island over here. It's Harbor Island Bridge, and it connects over here to St. Helena in this area that we can see right over here where the beachy area is and these homes it is Coffin Point. Um, and this whole area right out front of here in Coffin Point, all the way to the Cans, where it reaches out into the Harbor River and into the Sound. Um, this is all very shallow. At low tide, it is land right here. So we are trying to make sure of checking the depth so we don't get run aground. We don't want to get stuck out here. Hey, take pictures of that. Yeah, big there. I think we should leave this thing open. Run it. Let the little rest of it pull out the back. So, yeah. We got a table full there. We want this. Unfortunately, it's mostly full of those guys. We're going to leave those uh, rings loose on the tail bag.